Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today, today we're going to put together a new kit from scratch. I'm going to show you how to throw this together. Uh, all you need is a soldering iron, a little bit of soldering experience, and you just have to follow along. Uh, I made a video, it's actually linked below, it's an introduction video. This is essentially a three function board. It's a VU meter, uh, detects noise, levels of noise, uh, showing you via LED. Um, it's also uh, a Knight Rider scroller. And lastly, it's essentially a, a number five um, voice unit. So if you've ever watched Short Circuit or Short, Short Circuit 2, they're movies from the 80s and early 90s, and they're two of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, I actually watched it again last night. Uh, it's about a robot, a war robot that's struck by lightning and essentially given a soul of his own or a mind of his own and really inspired me as a kid so I wanted to in implement that into a project. So again the uh, the video that shows you how it all works is below. It's easy to put together. Let me show you the uh, the parts. This is a custom PCB, two pin terminal block, two 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, a 78L05 5 volt regulator, three 10k ohm resistors, uh, five 470 ohm resistors, ten 5mm red LEDs, two jumpers, two three-pin headers, a microphone, 18-pin dip socket, programmed microcontroller, and lastly, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So first we're going to solder in our uh, resistors and then we'll follow up with our capacitors and our voltage regulator. So in case you're finding it a little bit hard to see, uh, don't worry, all of the components on the silk screen are very, very easy to, uh, easy to see. So we'll go through the resistors. Your three 10K ohm resistors, go in the R2 slot labeled 10K R2, uh, the R1 slot labeled 10K R1, and lastly uh, the R8 resistor labeled 10K R8. Solder those into place, there's no polarity, just make sure that the right resistors are going in the right slots. Your 470 ohm resistors go in the R3 slot labeled 470R R3, your R4 slot labeled R4470R, your R5 slot right here labeled R5470R, your R6 slot labeled R6470R, and your R7 slot labeled R7470R. Solder those all into place, and next we'll do our regulator and our capacitors. Next, our capacitors and our regulator. Our electrolytic capacitor has a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is positive, the short lead is negative, and that goes in the C3 slot labeled C3. 10U for 10 micro. Now if you look very closely, the left hole has a little plus sign above it. That indicates that you want to place your positive lead in the left hole, your long lead of the capacitor. And the right pin is by default the negative lead. So you want to place your short lead in the right hole. Now if you reverse this and you power it up, that capacitor is going to blow up. So make sure long lead in the left, short lead on the right. Your two ceramic capacitors do not, they, they have equal uh, size leads. They are not polarized, they don't have a polarity. And they go in the uh, C2 slot and the C1 slot. They're labeled C2 0.1U for 0.1 micro and C1 0.1U again for, C, uh, for 0.1 micro. Lastly, your uh, 78 L05 5 volt regulator, that goes in the IC2 slot right here. Now you'll notice that there is uh, a curved side of the 7805 sorry and there is a flat side the flat side is on is on the top here and it has writing on it uh, on the IC2 slot you'll notice that there is a curved side on the back and a flat side on the bottom make sure that from a bird's eye view you line up the flat side facing the bottom of the board and the curved side facing the back of the board once you soldered those all into place make sure that there are absolutely no shorts and we'll move on to the socket and the three pin headers your first three pin header goes in this slot right here and your second one goes in the left three pins of this area. Uh, when I designed this board, there were uh, some extra pins that I did not end up implementing. So three pin header on the ground one and two pins. Uh, make sure that they don't, don't go in the three, four, and VCC pins. Uh, your socket and your micro, microcontroller have a notch on the left hand side of the chip and socket. And that's an indicator, that's a reference indicator. And on the Silk screen on the board for the PIC 18F1220, 
there is also a notch on the left hand side. So when we place our socket, from a bird's eye view, we have to make sure that the notch on the left hand side of the socket is facing the left, not the right. And as well, once we're done soldering that into place, we have to make sure that when we place our chip in the socket, that the notch on the chip on the left hand side is facing the left uh, side of the board, from this perspective of course. Uh, now when you solder in the, the socket, make sure that there are no shorts. What I like to do is to place the socket into the uh, into the uh, PCB, hold it down with one finger and solder one lead from the bottom so it's held down into place. Then I can turn the board around and solder in uh, solder the rest of the uh, leads onto the PCB. Again, shorting any of those pins will have a devastating effect on the circuit so be very very careful of that. Next we will do our microphone and our LEDs. You'll notice that on the underside of the microphone, there is uh, a lead that has uh, basically PCB traces out that connect to the shield of the microphone and a pin that does not. The pin with the PCB traces that are connected to the uh, shield of the microphone is your negative side. Uh, and we want to connect that, that pin to the mic minus pin. Your other lead without the PCB traces to the outer shield will be connected to the mic plus pin. If you reverse that, your microphone is not going to work and your circuit is going to work incorrectly. Now, as for the LEDs, they all go in these slots. L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6, L7, L8, L9, L10. Now, you'll notice that each LED, like the electrolytic capacitor, has a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is positive, or anode, and the negative is, short, uh, the, is the short lead, or a cathode. Now in every single case, in every single case, the positive long lead goes in the upper holes, and the short lead, the negatives, go in the lower holes. If you reverse any of those, uh, any, any LED that is reversed will not function. So make sure that in every single case, short lead on the bottom, long lead on the top, from this perspective. Solder those all into place, make sure the LEDs are flush to the board, or if you want you can add extension wires if you want to mount this to your own little robot or whatever. You can add extension wires, they can be thin, they can be fat, uh, there's so little power going to these LEDs that it doesn't matter too much, you just have to make sure that you do a decent soldering job. But for this video I'm going to solder them all directly uh, onto the board, flush with the board. Now. Once we're done that, we'll do our terminal block and then we'll run a test. The terminal block, very easy component, has a, a terminal side and a plastic side. Now, I know that this may sound like common sense, but make sure that the terminal sides are facing the bottom of the board, not the top of the board. Trust me, I know it's common sense, but everyone makes this mistake if they make kits over and over and over again like I do. Uh, once in a while, once in a very blue moon, you know, I'll be daydreaming, derp, 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 and I will solder in a terminal block backwards and then I'll smack my head. Because they're not fun to remove. They're very difficult to remove once you've soldered them in, unless you have a good uh, solder sucker. Uh, in any case, healthy amount of solder, terminals facing out or else you won't be able to wire in your, your power connections easily. Uh, next what we want to do is we want to take a uh, two pin jumper and short the one and the two pins, not the one and the ground pins. So the rightmost pins on the rightmost three pin header. Next we can take another jumper and short the top two pins here uh, and that will put us into program one mode. So let's place, uh, once I solder this all together, uh, we'll put some power on the input and we'll test the modes of operation. Time to test program one. I've got, uh, you can have up to seven, any, seven to ten volts on the V plus line and your supply ground on the GND line. So let's plug it in. We've got a set of program one. Hi there. Hello, baby. So it's just, it's, it's essentially a volume meter. Hello, 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 hello! Very, very simple. It's just a, a fun little neat thing to, to, to play with. Uh, if you play this to music, if you see the, uh, the video below, I actually play some music to this. It's, it's pretty neat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, uh, the jumper on, on PG1, and I'm going to place it on PG2, and we're going to power it back up. Program number two. Hello! Hello! So this is the number five mode. Um, when number five talks, uh, the, the LEDs end up uh, expanding. So, number five is alive! That type of thing. So, uh, 
and this is also working with volume, uh, less volume, more volume, more volume, more volume, and more volume. Hello! Again, uh, it's this this kit is a is a fun uh, it's fun to put together. It's got some neat functions, and uh, now I'm going to show you the the secret function. For this, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take the jumper here on the two and three uh, on the one and two pins and connect it to the G and D and one pins, the leftmost pins. So I'm going to power it off, power it back up in the secret mode. This is in the Night Rider mode. Now, if you uh, if you watch the video below, I actually put some music to it as kind of a comic effect. Plug it in. And it just scrolls to and from, just like the night, car and night rider kit. Now, in any case, it's just a three a fun three program uh, do-it-yourself electronics kit. It's easy to put together. Um, what you'll notice here is there is actually a slot for a button, and that is not used. And that's pretty much it. It's uh, easy to put together if you have a decent soldering iron, a little bit of soldering experience, and if you don't have any soldering experience, you can always work with somebody who does. But what I like to do is use a very very fine tip soldering iron. I love my soldering iron, uh, and uh, you'll be off to the races. Really, if you watch this video, it only should only take 10-15 minutes, and that's if you're working really slowly. So, thanks for watching. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this. If you want to find this, uh, if you want to find this kit, I'm going to be putting it up at engineeringshop.com and at electroniclessons.com, which points you to my eBay store. Thanks for watching, everyone.